Col di Lana is now a popular tourist destination for its hiking and ski resorts. It dominates several breathtaking mountain passes, including Valparola, Falzarego, Pordoi and Campo Longo. In 1915, the Austrians controlled these roads with artillery fire, as it was vital for their defence along the entire front. The Italian side of the Col di Lana was under a constant barrage of attacks from early in 1915 until the winter of 1916. It was a stalemate, but an Italian lieutenant would come up with an ingenious plan to take the Austrian position. Gelasio Caetani was working in the mines of Idaho when he decided to return to offer his services to the nation. His solution to remove the Austrians from their rocky perch was to simply blow the mountain up by digging a long tunnel under the top of the mountain with two mine chambers at the end of it, one filled with 3.5 tons of explosives and another cave with two tons. Giacomo Bollini is an Italian historian who has studied the battles for control over the Col di Lana. Even during successful attacks on the Col di Lana, Italians had to immediately retreat from their positions on the summit due to incredible retaliatory fire from the surrounding Austrian artillery. The Austrians were snug in their forts with the necessary artillery needed to defend their key position. On the night of April the 16th, 1916, at 11.35 p.m., Lieutenant Caetani's mine exploded, nearly completely burying the Austrian garrison under command of Lieutenant Anton von Churchenthaler. Once the debris stopped falling, the Italians were easily able to occupy the summit. Miraculously, Churchenthaler survived, along with some fellow soldiers in his company. They were all forced to surrender by the first Italian soldiers to conquer the summit. Andy Hawkins and Julia Robertson of the British military archaeologists Durand Group are led by Cortina Alpine guide Paolo Tassi up the long slope that leads to the village of Livina Longo in the Col di Lana. With the help of the Cortina Mountain Corps Land Rover, they travel along the paths once marched across by Italian troops with heavy guns and supplies. The terraces dug to house the soldiers' barracks and the entrances of tunnels that form a complex system of defensive bunkers and ammunition deposits are still visible today. The Austrian guard had a really dominant position. They were on the top, they were shooting down. Mm -hmm. It was really easy for them to defend at the first line. Right. Yeah, they were, okay. Even with not many people, but it was a strong position. Only by travelling on these very trails does one get an idea of how hopeless it must have been to try to attack the Austrians hunkered down in their bunkers with the Italians always vulnerable to artillery fire in the open fields leading up to the summit. From this view, we can understand the brilliance of Caetani's plan and grasp the complexity of the tunnels that cross the Italian-Austrian front. I mean, when, when you look at how they made the choice to come in and, and, and mine it after they were pushed back off yeah. the ridge again. Yeah. On, on the because Cage they came attack. here originally, didn't they? In, in, they were here in 1915. Yeah. And they, I think it was about 90 assaults to try and take the summit. And they managed to in December, but only for, for a few hours one night before they were pushed right. back down. And it was that was in December, and I think it was January that they began changing tactics and doing the mining. After eliminating the Austrian stronghold on Col di Lana, the Italians began the attack all along the Dolomite front that ranged from Livina Longo 
to Arabba to Cortina, but it would not prove easy. The twin peaks of Col di Lana and Mount Sief were close, and Mount Sief was still firmly under Austrian control. This forced the Italians to hold the line here. They decided they had to build another mine under the Austrian stronghold. But this time, the Austrians were ready and set out to build a counter mine. It was a dangerous underground game of cat and mouse. In the end, three large mines that completely changed the face of the mountain forever were built on Mount Sief. Two Italian tunnels and one Austrian. Mount Sief never fell to the Italians, and after the defeat at Caporetto in November of 1917, the entire Italian Fourth Army deployed on the Dolomite Front was forced to withdraw. Mount Sief would stay firmly in Austrian hands. <laughs>